Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name's Helen, this is my channel Stitch with Repeat and today is a Friday Sews for you. As you know, Friday is a really fun little way of catching you up with everything we've been up to, whether it be sewing makes, whether it be purchases or whether it just be life in general. So do make sure you go and check out everyone who follows on the Friday Sews hashtag here on YouTube. And obviously I want to thank the lovely Jen from Today and Jen Sewing Room and she set up this wonderful community in the first place. So yeah, I had a fantastic time this weekend. As you're aware, hopefully, I went to the Knitting and Stitching show at Alexandra Palace on the Saturday, which was brilliant. I will share everything with you at the end, but just a little bit about my day. As you probably know from my previous videos, it's a long day for me. Um, getting up quite early, catching a train at just before six in the morning and then getting home finally about 11 o'clock at night because uh, it's about three hours, three and a half hours train into London from Plymouth and then obviously getting across to Alexandra Palace. So it is quite a long day. It's a bit full on because of all the travelling and then all the walking around and looking at all the stalls and the travelling back. But I so glad I did it. I didn't regret it. I did have a very quiet day at home on Sunday <laughs> recovering, but it was well worth it. I'm really glad I managed to go to the show. So when I went to the show this year, I was actually on my own. Previous years I've gone with Angela. She actually went, I think, for a little bit on Friday because she was in London for the weekend visiting her daughter. Um, so I couldn't go with her this time. So I went on my own. But I'm never worried about going on my own to these kind of things because everyone's so friendly and I almost always bump into people that I know either in real life or via Instagram and YouTube and as I suspected that was the case. So yeah I travelled up, I had a little list and a budget which uh, may not come as a surprise, was slightly <laughs> blown out of the water but on one particular purchase which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, yeah, bumped into lots of people, spent some time with the lovely Nikki, who is Sew and Snip here and on Instagram. Also, for the first time, met the lovely Claire and her mum. Claire is Love Red Sews on here on Instagram. And um, I've always wanted to meet up with her because we've chatted quite a lot. And um, I really love uh, Claire's YouTubes. And it's always really nice to chat to her on Instagram and that. So we did say it'd be lovely to meet up. So it was really nice to finally catch up with her. And um, she's lovely, as I suspected she would be. And her mum as well was lovely meeting her. So I had some really nice uh, chats and cups of tea <laughs> with Claire and her mum. Also bumped into the two Amelias, that's So Amelia. And I think it's Amelia Ellen Sews. I will put everybody's details in the description for you. And also Judy, who's the running so-and-so, who again, I've never managed to actually bump into before. So it was lovely to see her. And also Selena, who I have met before, and we did say we hoped we'd bump into her. Selena is so small, uh, so small 25, I think it is, over on Instagram. But like I say, it will all be in the description. Yes, I managed to get some photos as well and had a wonderful day. Had specific stalls in mind and I managed to get around them. And I had a lovely, good mooch around everybody else as well. And yeah, it was really, really good. The first stall that I really wanted to go to that I had planned from the get go that I was going to visit was the lovely Jen, uh, Jen Hogg. And she is generates if you're not aware, which I'm sure you are. And it was quite funny because I'd been um, sharing a couple of new products that she was going to be um, selling at the show on Instagram, saying, aren't these brilliant and going to get mine. And I said to her jokingly, I just hope you don't sell out before I get there on the Saturday. And Jen was like, oh, no, no, I've I've learnt my mistakes from previous launches and I've made plenty. <laughs> no. So the thing that I wanted, I'll pop in a photo because I don't have it because she did sell out, frustratingly, <laughs> before the Saturday, is this brilliant new flexi hem ruler. Um, sorry, hemmer. Uh, you may have seen. I know that Ruan and Angela have bought them. They were lucky enough to go up before me on Saturday when she still had them. But I have pre-ordered it while I was with Jen and she's invoiced me today. So I know that will be coming very soon. But it's brilliant. I loved the way I've got her original um, hot hammer. But this one has curves so you can literally shape it around anything that is not just a straight line, which I think is ingenious. And I'm really looking forward to getting that. 
but I did get the other things on her stand that I wanted to. And I will have to look up on her page what she actually calls these. Um, I think they, she might have called them winders, but again, it's a new product she's come up with. And I love it. She's come up with these little acrylic um, winders. And so literally on these gaps, you can wind like your loose elastics or ribbons or bias binding, anything like that. And keep them nice and neat and tidy so i got she was doing sort of a mix and match three for a set price so i got these three in the smaller size and then i got these three in the larger size so i was really happy that i managed to get those and i have got my pre-order on its way for the flex hammer so i'm not disappointed that she didn't have them. in fact i'm really pleased for her that they did well i did say to her joking it's because i shared it on my stories <laughs> so that was the first person I went to now if you've ever been to the knitting and stitching shows you'll be aware that Jen always shares her stand area with little rosy cheeks they come up together they share and it works really well for them now I didn't need any more labels however when Ruan was there I think on the Thursday she shared that she bought this new product uh, which little rosy cheeks haven't put on their website yet and I was instantly, I need one of those. And it is this really lovely. Hopefully you can see it's sparkly and it's a folder. It's a ring binder. Oh yeah, I've labelled it. <laughs> it's a ring binder. And inside it's got these inserts and it's got four pockets and they're double sided. So you've got eight sections on each sheet and they're for your labels. So I got that in this lovely sort of turquoise colour. And then they're kept neat and tidy and perfect for all my labels. Because currently, before I started using this, I had them all in a tin and a bag. And I used to have to empty the whole lot and sift through to find what one. But now I'll be able to clearly see in my folder. As you can see, I've put a lot already in there. So I was really pleased to get that because that actually wasn't on my original list. So I got those from Jen and from Little Rosy Cheeks. I'm just checking my list. Uh, the next place that I bought anything at was Fabric Godmother. Now, I think I buy some a piece of fabric at, at Fabric Godmother's stall every year. And it's because I love their fabrics, but I usually don't buy them. They're a little bit um, more on the pricey side. And I think if I'm going to get it, I wait to the show because then obviously I save a little bit by not having to pay the postage. So this is one of those, I'll have to look it up. It's one of their lovely new range with the animals on. And it's a viscose twill. And I had the lovely Mercedes, who is always at these shows, helping out as well, uh, former sewing bee, reach up and get it down for me because it was up really, really high. And it's this gorgeous cat fabric on that really lovely, uh, it's on black. I then got sort of this electric blue, but you've got, oh, they're upside down. You've got these gorgeous bright pink, I would say cheetahs or leopards all over. Absolutely love this fabric. So I picked up two and a half meters um, of this because I wasn't sure what I was gonna make. Any suggestions, please pop them in the comments below. That was my first fabric. And then the only other place I got fabric, yes, I only got from two stalls, was that a company I'd not heard of before. And they were called What the Fabric, and that is them there. They gave us this uh, to hang on our door, um, which I thought was lovely. And uh, yeah, I was with Nikki at this point, who is so and snip, and we were drawn to their stand because they had kits for making trainers and like high top sneakers, which were amazing. I did say that this time of year is not the best time for like canvas shoes because obviously with you know the rain and, and that kind of thing but I'm definitely going to bear them in mind next year um, for maybe sort of spring summer time but when I was there I noticed that a lot of their fabrics they were using for the kits was Ruby Star Society and out of the corner of my eye I noticed they weren't just selling kits they had it by the meter now, I love Ruby Star Society. I loved it from when my bag making days because I loved the bright colours. But I made a Stevie from Tilly and the Buttons quite a while ago, quite a few years ago, out of a Ruby Star Society. And I'll hopefully pop in a photo here. And every time I get out, I forget how much I love it. And I think it's 
more to do with the prints because I absolutely love that print, which, as I say, was a Ruby Star Society. So she had so many to choose from. And I decided I'm going to make myself a couple of tops. And I bought two fabrics. Firstly, I got this one here, which is gorgeous. And it's the Firefly. As you can see, it's got that, again, sort of the pinks and the blues, but it's also got some bright oranges. Love it. I got a, a metre and a half of that one. And then this one, which again, I was so drawn to the colours in it. I got this one here, which I don't know. I'm trying to find the salvage to see if it's got a name. This one is Juicy, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, it's got those flowers on that gorgeous sort of turquoise teal with again oranges and pinks so there's a real theme with my colours but a metre and a half of both of those and in case any top I make needed any contrasting fabric they had all the coloured of the plain but speckle fabrics that Ruby Star do and I picked up this one in this sort of turquoise with the speckles because I thought that goes really well with those two fabrics so as I say I will put the details for all these shops down below so that was what the fabric so those are my two fabric purchases and then the next thing I bought I thought was going to be my last purchase of the day probably I wasn't planning on buying any patterns because I have lots of patterns but I have seen this one being made up by quite a few people and loved it and it is the high cuff sweater by assembly line and Higgs and Higgs had a whole row of assembly line patterns. What I love about this one is that it's a woven fabric for the top, but then you put the ribbing around the bottom band and the neck and the cuffs. And it's got this slight um, raised shape at the back. Absolutely love this. And if I can get it out of the fabric, which I think I can, this might be what I use my Ruby Star Society for. I think because it's got a lovely big expanse to show off that fabric, I think that'd be really good. So I did get that one. And then I thought I was done. And the budget was well intact at this point and I was feeling pretty proud of myself because I didn't go mad. I did buy a few fabrics, which I knew I would. I bought my stuff from Jen, which I knew I would. I needed this fire in my life so I was happy with that but then I saw this <laughs> so I don't know if any of you know what this is I'll have to pop in a photo because I'm not getting it out of the box at the moment you can see it just there basically I'm so middle-aged it's an iron <laughs> but it's not just any iron I love the Oliso iron which is normally a yellow and if you haven't seen it I'll hopefully pop in um, if I can find it, like photo or video. If you leave it on and have it down on your ironing board, it's got these little feet and it pops up so that you don't burn through anything. I think it's fantastic. But recently they've released a Tula Pink version and I absolutely love Tula Pink. So I did say to myself before I went there, in my head, I thought if they happen to have that iron, I'll have a look at it. And of course they did. I'm trying to remember the company was called, let me just check, sorry. It was called Siesta Frames. I will put their details below. But yeah, I just had to work out whether A, I should buy an iron, which of course the answer is yes. And B, could I carry it home on the train? Which again was a resounding, yes, I can. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't buy a lot. Uh, this did go over my budget, but I'm very happy with it. So, yeah, all in all, fantastic day, lovely company, wonderful stands as always. And then one of my highlights of the day was popping to see Tilly on her stand because Tilly always, or as far as I can see, always goes on the Saturday and she's there with Abby. And um, yeah, it was great because I was wearing my Marnie. So let me just put this down. When I was getting ready to go to the show, I was planning to wear my um, gorgeous sort of green leafy Marnie which hopefully I'll pop in a photo here with my new bob pants that I made the other week I thought it'd be look really nice and obviously Tilly's going to be there and also it's comfortable however because I was meant to originally go for the whole weekend and I'd got tickets for the Friday and the Saturday I had made sure that I wasn't working on the Friday or the Saturday or the Sunday 
but then I couldn't go on the Friday so I was at a bit of a loose end <laughs> and uh, in my wisdom I thought I know what I'll do I will make a brand new Marnie and then wear it to the show and so I chose the fabric I washed the fabric I cut it all out and I thought if I don't get it finished it's fine it's not the end of the world I'll wear the one I planned but it'd be lovely if I could wear a new one and if you follow me on Instagram you will see I did get it finished and I did wear it and what was absolutely wonderful is that Tilly and I were talking about how lovely the Marnie is and how many people were wearing it at the show and she asked if she could take a photo and of course she could and she shared it on her stories so I'll pop that in here and I'll just get you the actual Marnie to show you. So here it is and this is again like my first Marnie this is a gorgeous soft double gauze. I got this from uh, Fabrics by Penny on Facebook. One thing I do, let me take it off, which is a tip that I got from the lovely Rachel who stitched up, is the ruffles on the shoulders here are meant to just be hemmed but I always cut out twice the amount of fabric so that I can face them so that when this invariably blows over which it does you see the fabric on both sides so I always do that it's just the plain version otherwise there's none of the tucks on the front or the sleeves but I love how that looks now a couple of things because I did finish it on the Friday is that firstly I don't know if you'll be able to see but I have not hemmed it because I knew I was going to wear it tucked in so I thought I'm not going to to get that done because it was quite late on the Friday <laughs> by the time I finished and the other thing was when I put the button on because the double gauze has a bit of sort of stretch to it there's too much of a gap um, but I just wanted it on for the day um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the button off and move it across so that when the loop is on it there won't be the gap uh, otherwise I'm really really happy I absolutely love this fabric um, had a lot of people comment and a few people stroking it <laughs> because of how soft they did ask first uh, but yeah I was really chuffed with that I felt really nice in it so yeah perfect so I was really really happy with that now I have bought some other items over the last few weeks uh, that was all my Ali Pally stuff but as well as them I bought some fabrics from the lovely Tamlin um, oh and I'll just show you I haven't thanked her yet so if you're watching this thank you ever so much Tam and she popped in some labels as well which is these three labels here which is very kind of her um, with the fabric and I bought these two gorgeous fabrics both over two meters firstly this one here which is this gorgeous um, sort of red tie-dye it's really soft it's really lovely and I think I've got just under two and a half meters of that um, and then the other one I got from Tamman, which I think is possibly from a Beyond the Pink Door box, is this lovely sort of blue and green splodgy viscose here, which again is over two metres. And what I am thinking, I'm not sure about this one at the moment, but with the red, now that I've been making Marnie's again, I'm, I'm thinking of Marnie. But I think I've only ever made the double gauze versions with the flouncy ruffle here. What I'm thinking with this one is that I'll leave the ruffles off, but I'm going to do the wavy pin tucks uh, across the bodice. And I think in this viscose like that, it will look like a completely different top. I'm not sure if I'll do the wavy pin tucks on the sleeves. I might not. But yeah, I think that will look completely different to my other two Marnie. So I'm quite excited to try that one. So what else have I been buying? I had my monthly labels from the Specky Seamstress. Uh, which I've been ever so good I've put them in here so hopefully you can see they've got uh, what does it say wardrobe staple on the three large ones and then the four smaller ones are fish uh, so those are ones I subscribe to and so I get them every single month I've also got some earrings from the lovely Beck who is Jazz and Wow, and I love how they came wrapped in this gorgeous tissue paper and a little note from Becky. I am wearing one set, which is these gorgeous moons here. And if they don't show up well, I'll show photos. I also ordered these 
with the little bats because we're in October. I thought they would be suitable. And these I am going to wear. I'm working on the 31st of October, which is, of course, Halloween. So I have these gorgeous ones here with the black with the sparkles on them, which say boo. <laughs> um, yeah. So my plan is to wear them to work. So thank you ever so much. I will link Becky's Etsy page down below for you. And then what else have I bought? A few things from my work. Hopefully you're aware by now I work in a haberdashery store in Plymouth. And the worst thing about working there is that I keep wanting to buy stuff. Because every time I see things while I'm at work, I want to buy them. But this is not very exciting, but it is needed. I've bought myself another seam ripper. I love these ones with the really good size handle. So I seem to lose seam rippers I don't know about anyone else but I literally can have them in my hand put them down and then can't find them <laughs> so I bought another one of those at work I bought this really cute little bee iron-on motif which I'm thinking if I do a cardigan or a sweatshirt I think it'll look really cute and I also bought some buttons I was meant to be sorting the buttons um, to put out on the shop floor but I put some aside for myself I bought six of these sort of um, blue, white and grey ones there. And then six of these multicoloured in the clear. Love those. If none of these are showing up, I will put photos in. And then the last couple of things I bought is um, kits. So these both arrived today. Today. So how perfect I'm recording this. So this first one is a collaboration between Laura, who is the Specky Seamstress, and Kaylee, who runs Fleur A Or, which is the fabric company. They've done a little box for Halloween. And I got the, I want to say, yeah, I got the bigger box. There was two different types, uh, which had a variety of amount of labels, bias binding and fabric in. So, yeah, I absolutely love this. I don't know if you'll be able to see. I might put in a photo if this doesn't work. I'm hoping this won't just fall over. <laughs> but it is this gorgeous art gallery fabric there, which I have two and a half metres of. And then Laura's put in these gorgeous little ghost labels, which I have four of one colour and four of the other. And then three metres of this really cute bias binding. And uh, yeah, came in this lovely box, came with this cute little card from Kaylee, thanking me for shopping with them. And also I've got a wonderful 10% discount. So yeah, I'm really pleased. I absolutely forgot I ordered this, <laughs> but now I really need to think about what I'd like to make because it is not that long until Halloween and I'd love to get this made up. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to receive that today. And the other one that came today is slightly different for me because it's not sewing. Uh, so let me show you what I've got. So hopefully you can see this is from Wool Couture Company. And again, this was a it was a kit that I saw and thought I'm going to give that a go. So it is called a Beginner Basics crochet kit of this and you basically choose the kit and then there's a couple of or few different colour walls that you can choose and so it comes lovely in this so inside the box it's inside a bag which all of this is recyclable so I think that's wonderful and in the bag it says my bag of happy which I love and it's got the pattern and it's for a scarf. So they do other kits, but I chose a scarf because I thought, you know, I'm not very good. I've done crochet attempts in the past. You've got the um, darning needle, I'm guessing, for the edges when you finish it. And then you've got the manual of how you actually make this scarf. And like I say, it had lots of different colours you could choose from. Inside you get the wall you need. And I thought a basic for the winter would be this gorgeous slate grey so you have all the balls that you need in there so yeah I thought I'd give that a go because if you follow me for a while you may remember I made a granny square quite a long time ago 
and it came out really well but that was at a class so I had the tutor there helping me when I tried to do one at home it was a disaster so I've kind of got a lot of crocheting stuff hooks stitch markers wall but I've sort of parked it so I'm hoping this might help me uh, get going again because I see a lot of gorgeous crochet walls and kits at my shop and I'm thinking if I can get to grips with crocheting I will be well away <laughs> so yeah it's been a really good week I'm really happy to get my Marnie made I've had some lovely purchases and I had a wonderful day out I don't have any particular plans coming up for the week ahead but I would like to plan my Halloween fabrics from that collaboration and I'd really like to hem my Marnie but possibly do my red Marnie as I said so yeah that's me for this week do let me know if you like any of the things I bought what you would make with the fabric that I've got and if you went to Ali Pali let me know what day you went what you thought of it what you bought uh, yeah that is all I've got for now I hope you've managed to do some sewing or something sewing related and I'll catch you all in my next video mm -hmm.